What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 woodworking tutorial for you. So I thought it would be fun in this video to show you how I would model a cabinet inside of Fusion 360. Note that we're modeling this to a level of detail like you were building it as a woodworker. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I'm gonna do my best to model this out um, properly where all the different parts and pieces of the cabinet are in here. Um, one thing to note about this is I am a 3D modeling instructor, not a woodworker. So if some of my dimensions are a little bit off or the way this comes together isn't perfect, um, I apologize in advance, but you should be able to take this method and use it to create really whatever you want. Um, inside of Fusion 360. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and start from the back and work our way forward. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a sketch and then um, drawing on this vertical face right here. And so I'm going to start by roughing out the size of my back sheet. So I'm assuming my back plywood sheet is going to be 42 inches high. So I'm going to draw a line right here that's 42 inches. I'm going to draw a line across here that's going to be 29 inches. And so then we can just use the rectangle tool. So just tap the R key and then click this corner and this corner, and this will rough out our back sheet. And then we're going to click on the button for finish sketch. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this to give it thickness. And so the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to select it and then tap the E key in order to activate the extrude tool. And remember that all of the things that we build here, we want to create as components rather than bodies. And the reason for that is because we want to be able to schedule all of this stuff out a little bit later. So we're going to extrude this back and we're going to select the option for component. And I'm assuming this back sheet is going to be a quarter inch thick. So I'm just going to type in, in this box, one quarter inch and hit OK. And you may need to type in 0.25 um, if it's being finicky like this. So one thing you may want to do as you go is you may want to relabel these components. So for example, I'm going to label this as, um, usually I like to use the dimension and also what it is. So in this situation, for example, I'm going to type in plywood and then we'll say quarter inch dash 42 inch by 29 inch. And you don't have to do it this way. I like to do it this way um, because we're gonna schedule this out a little bit later. And if I'm descriptive, then everything that shows up on this list um, can show up in my schedule a little bit later. But now let's go ahead and let's create our side panels. So the way that I'm gonna do that, so I'm gonna create another sketch. And in this situation, I'm gonna create a sketch on this vertical face right here. And so for these, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna draw a rectangle. So I'm gonna use the line tool. And draw a rectangle that's going to be 11.25 inches deep and hit the enter key. And then I'm gonna draw a line up that's 42 inches high. And you can use the rectangle tool in order to draw a rectangle across this face. And so then we can click on the button for finish sketch. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us our side panel. And so I'm gonna take this side panel, I'm gonna tap the E key to extrude it, extrude it in. Um, this is going to have a thickness of, I believe, three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna type in 0.75. Make sure that you select the option for new component and click on OK. And so what we've done is we've now created our side panel. I'm gonna go ahead and label this as well. So I'm gonna call this hardwood dash three quarter inch dash 42 inches by 11 and a quarter. And actually this should probably be 11 and a quarter by 42 inches. So usually I put the height second. But really you can do that however you want. Just uh, figure out whatever your conventions are going to be um, when you do that. And so now what we need to do is we need to put our slots that are going to go on the side right here. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna create a sketch on this front face like this. And then we're gonna rough out wherever we think that recess is going to go. So in this situation, for example, um, I'm gonna draw a line down and uh, I'm assuming that my top plate or my top piece is going to be three quarters of an inch thick. So I'm gonna draw a line down three quarters of an inch. Then I'm gonna draw a line back up three eighths of an inch. So this is gonna go up 
three eighths of an inch. And so then I'm assuming this is gonna have a quarter inch recess, so 0.25. And then I can use the rectangle tool in order to finish roughing this out. I'm gonna click on finish sketch. And what I can do is I can come in here and I can use the extrude tool in order to extrude this. And in this case, we wanna extrude this to the back side of this piece. So this piece is 11 and a quarter inches deep. So we're gonna type in negative 11.25. And we wanna leave this in cut mode so that it removes this material. Then I'm gonna click on okay. So what I have here is I now have my recess that my top piece can sit inside of. And so I wanna do the same thing. Um, I wanna go down about 15 and 3 eighths of an inch. So you can either create a new sketch or you can turn this sketch back on by going into your sketches and clicking the little I, then right clicking on it and clicking edit sketch. So if you wanna do that, then you can come in here and you can add this to this sketch so that you don't have a bunch of different sketches in here. And so this is going to be where my fixed shelf is going to go. So I'm assuming I'm gonna have another fixed shelf, maybe like 15 inches down or something like that. So I'm just gonna draw a line down 15 inches and then we'll do the same thing. We'll just draw a three eighths of an inch. Well, we'll draw a quarter inch deep, three eighths of an inch long recess, just like this. And we'll click on finish sketch. So then I can do the same thing over here. Extrude this by negative 11.25 and hit the enter key. And so there, now we've removed the material on this side. Then we're gonna do that one more time at the very bottom. So I'm just going to edit this sketch again. So I'm just gonna right click on it. Whoops. Click on edit sketch. And then we'll just draw something from the bottom here this time. So in this situation, um, I'm assuming that this is going to go up three eighths of an inch. It's gonna go up three eighths of an inch again and then that's where our recess is going to be. So this is going to be a quarter inch. And we can click on finish sketch. We can use the extrude tool to remove this material. So negative 11.25 and hit the enter key. Then we can turn this sketch off. And so now what we have here is we have our side panel. So our side panel is here on the side. And in a second, we can come in here and we can model out our shelf pieces that are going to sit inside of these recesses. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna create a copy of this object. And so the way that I'm gonna do this is a little counterintuitive, but it's going to work better. So what we wanna do is before we use the move tool to move it, we wanna create a mirror. So we wanna go down to create, we wanna mirror this object. And then in this situation, we wanna set our pattern type to components. That way we can select this piece. Then we wanna select this as our mirror plane. So this face right here. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna mirror this or create a flipped version of it. I'm gonna click on okay. So now I can take this object, which got created as a second component, and I can just use the move tool and I can move this across here. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use the point to point option. So I'm gonna click on point to point, and then I need to set an origin point which can be this point right here. And then I want to create a copy, or not a copy, I want to uh, create a target point right here. So I'm gonna click again in order to set this as my target point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. So now what we have is we have our two side panels right here ready to go. So now that we have our side panels, it's really easy to come in here and create our fixed shelves. So the way that we're gonna create our fixed shelves is we're just going to create a sketch. So create a sketch. And we wanna place this sketch on the front face of this object. And uh, if it asks you if the components have been moved and capture position, go ahead and click on capture position. We probably should have done that when we moved it initially. But um, what this allows us to do is this allows us to come in here. So that, that'll basically capture the position of that component. So that's stored as data. So now this knows that this object needs to go right here. But now it's really easy for us to come in here using the sketch tool and just sketch out our shelf so that it fills this hole. Click on finish sketch. And then we can extrude this across into a new component. 
So, and if you wanted to, you could select these edges and maybe offset these in a little bit if you wanted this to be a little bit smaller. I'm gonna leave this as is for right now. I'm just gonna extrude this across, just like this. And I'm gonna give it a depth of negative 11.25. So same size as our side panels that we had right here. And notice that you wanna make sure that you select new component when you do this, you don't want this to join. Um, you want this to be created as a new component over here on your list. So um, in order to do that, we're just gonna select new component. We're gonna click on okay. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a component over here. Then you can go ahead and you can type in hardwood. You can name these however you want, by the way. Um, this is just how I keep them organized. Um, but for this one, we're gonna say that it has an 11 inch, an 11 and a quarter inch depth by 28 and a half inch width. In cabinets, you might have like a cleat running across the back here or something like that. Um, I haven't included that in here, but you can definitely have that. Um, we're just gonna keep this simple for right here and just say the shelf runs all the way to the back. Um, if you did have a cleat in here, you just model an extra piece and then uh, you'd have this run back until it intersects with your cleat um, and create that as a different component. Um, for the sake of speed, we're just gonna kind of leave this as is. Um, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a couple copies of this. So I've got my one object right here that I've created. Well, I also wanna use the move tool in order to create a copy. And so we want to go down to move object and set components. I'm gonna select this component. I'm gonna create copy and we're gonna use point to point again. And we're gonna set a target point or a base point we're gonna set an origin point right here, and a target point right here. And you can see how that creates a copy really easily. Then we're gonna do the same thing, or we're gonna click on OK. Then we're gonna create one more copy the same way. So create copy, origin point, target point, and click on OK. So now, you have your different shelves in here. And for the sake of speed, I'm not going to model out holes and adjustable shelving in here. Um, you could definitely do that um, just by drawing circles on this face and then moving them upward. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as is for right now. Um, and let's go ahead and let's model our front panel and then the uh, rails that go along the outside of that front panel. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna draw a front sheet. So I'm just gonna create a sketch then draw a rectangle that runs across this front face. Like this. I'm gonna click finish sketch. And then I'm gonna extrude that out. So I'm just gonna click on this face and make sure that you pick up all the faces that need to be a part of this profile. So make sure that you've selected both this face and this face because it looks like these kind of got split in here and what we want to do is we want to create a new component and i'm going to say this is going to be three quarters of an inch thick um, for right now so we'll just type in 0.75 you might do that with a different kind of material but we're going to leave it at three quarters of an inch thick for right now so that's going to be our front door we're going to click on okay so that's going to be our front door right here i'm going to go ahead and type in hardwood and it's actually probably going to be plywood and a lot of this depends on the kind of wood that you're going to use to create this. Um, honestly, I'm not 100% sure. You guys can let me know if this would be plywood or hardwood. I'm going to call it plywood for right now. Um, we'll call it three quarters of an inch. And we'll do a dash. And we'll do... This should again be 42 inches. Or 29 inches. By 42 inches high. So that can be our front piece. And then let's go ahead and add our rails that go on the front of this. And so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to start by creating my first rail. And I'm going to do that just by creating a sketch on this front face. And I'll draw a line here. And we'll call this, I assume these are going to be about an inch and a half. So 1.5. I'll draw a line across like this. Draw a line across like this. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna model out this side piece or the profile of this side piece. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna type in one and a half. Again. Then we'll draw a line here that's gonna be an inch and a half thick. 
and you can use the rectangle tool in order to draw a rectangle right here and click on finish sketch. And so what I've done is I've basically created these two profiles here that we can extrude out into our rails and then um, once we've got these set up where we can extrude these out into our rails we can just copy the objects that we create. So I'm just going to extrude this give this a thickness of a quarter of an inch make sure you set it as a new component and click on OK then we'll do the same thing and we need to make sure to turn this sketch back on we'll just extrude this out again a quarter of an inch again make sure that you set it as a component and click on OK we need to make sure to name these so we can call this hardwood quarter inch dash 29 inches by one and a half the same thing over here hardwood quarter inch then this one should be 42 inches minus 3 inches so 39 inches by an inch and a half and then we're just going to create copies of our objects so I'm going to turn this sketch back off and then I will copy this first object right here we're going to create a copy we'll set our origin point to this corner we'll set our target point to this corner and click on OK Then we'll do the same thing with this one. So we'll select the move tool, put it in copy mode, set our origin point right here, set our target point right here, and click on OK. And we might want to add another rail across this face. So maybe I should have had these vertically run all the way up and these other objects stop on the side here but for right now we'll just go ahead and model something else out so we're just going to create another sketch on this face and let's say that this is going to go down maybe 15 inches then we can just extrude this out do a new component by a quarter of an inch and so let's go ahead and let's apply a wood material to this. So we'll go down to modify. We'll go down to appearance for right now. And we're going to go down to woods. There's a few different options in here. So there's some finished options like mahogany that you can drag on here. Or there's also a cherry. There's a bunch of different woods that you can drag on here and try. So in this case, let's go with the oak semi-gloss. And I'm just going to select all of these, and I'm going to drag that oak material onto this object. And so this gives me a cabinet model inside of Fusion 360. So that's where I'm going to end this video. In the next video, I may go through and talk through how to create a plan from this cabinet, maybe an exploded view. Leave a comment below. Let me know where you'd like to see me go from here. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.